Hello and welcome to a new episode of Library of the Week. This is part of a series of articles I write on Medium about Python libraries and I try to do them weekly. I make a video for each article and you can find the link to the article in the description of the video. Today I will be talking about Alter, a library for data visualization with Python that follows a declarative approach as opposed to the imperative approach that many other libraries like Matplotlib or Plotlib follow. Let's see how all this looks. Alter or Vega Alter is a Python library and it is based on the Vega Lite grammar. And Vega Lite is a declarative JSON syntax. So what this is, is that you create JSON files. So this is what the Python library will do. It will translate your Python syntax into a JSON. And then that JSON file is interpreted by the Vega editor. Here, for example, this chart can be opened in the Vega editor. So let's click on it. And see, here you have it. You have this JSON syntax that creates this chart here. It imports the data from this CSV file. It creates a bar chart and you see if you change the time unit from month to day, you have the precipitation, so the rain per day instead of the rain per month. So I guess this is an average, right? So yes, the aggregate is the mean, so the mean per day. So now let's see how we do this with Python. And by the way, with Python, it will generate charts just like matplotlib or you don't need to come to the Vega editor, although you can, but you don't, you don't have to. Okay. So let's start creating our first simple visualizations with Alter and Python. The first thing is to create a data frame, a pandas data frame to be able to visualize the data that is inside. I'm going to create the iris data frame because it's classic and simple. I have this iris.csv file here with the data frame. All the links are in the Medium article. And now that I have the data frame, I can plot it. So I'm going to create a bar chart. And the bar chart is going to give me the average petal length for each different species in the data frame. For that, well, first of all, I import Alter as ALT. So I do ALT.chart, I plot my iris data frame, iris DF. I use the mark bar function to create the bar chart and encode. Encode is the keyword that you use with Alter to specify the X, the Y's, the color, and all the parameters of the chart. My X are going to be my species, so this is the name of the column in the data frame. And my Y is the average of the petal length, which, by the way, this is the name of the column, petal length CM. And see, it is declarative. I want the average of petal length. I declare what I want. And here is my simple bar chart. Now let's make a simple scatter plot. I still use my alt chart irisdf and I use mark circle instead of bar, mark bar, sorry. I still use the encode and in this case my x are going to be my petal length and I want to compare it to my petal width. I use the color parameter to break each dot in the scatter plot by species. And here you have it. See, this syntax is much more simple and user-friendly than matplotlib or even plotlib. So yeah, Alter has a very, very nice syntax. Now I'm going to show you a more complex example. Here I'm going to recreate the same plot but adding more personalization or more parameters to the chart. I still create my chart with irisdf like I did before. Then I use mark circle. This is the same. And Let's see my encode. In my X, instead of passing directly the petal length CM, I use this X, this alt.x or alter.x function, where I pass, I still pass the petal length, but I change the title of it. So what this is going to do is it's going to rename, see my labels here for the axis, petal length CM will become petal length CM. So it looks better for the reader. We do the same with the y-axis. For the color, I also can use alt.color. I'm going to plot the species and I'm going to use an alternative scale. So scale is the color scheme, as it's called in matplotlib, for example. It is a preset 
range of colors that you can use. So dark too is one of the categorical ones because this is categorical data, the species, because they're categories, right? So there's color, the genic and so on. I'm going to introduce a size parameter, but this is more to show you. I don't think this is useful really for the visualization, but it will create a differential size by petal width. When the point has a smaller petal width, it will be smaller in the chart, and when it's bigger, it will be bigger. And see this dot, this colon, and Q? This Q stands for quantitative, which is also referred to as continuous, because the petal width is a continuous variable. And this is another example of the declarative syntax that Alter uses. You will see this in other examples later. By telling Alter what kind of variable this is, then Alter knows what it has to do with it, right? And this is totally the difference between a declarative approach and an imperative approach when you tell it what it has to do and it's up to you to know that this is quantitative and do what is appropriate, right? In this case, you just have to tell it what it is. And I set this title, so this will be the title used for the legend. I also introduce this tooltip. As you can see, this tooltip parameter, I pass a list of values that are some of the columns of the data frame. This will display the information for each dot or for each element in the chart when I hover over it with the mouse. I can set the opacity. This is often called transparency. And then I can make the chart interactive, so this means that I'm going to be able to zoom in and out. And I can set a title for the whole chart. So let's see how, how this all looks. So see the color scheme is different than the one here. When I hover over the data, each dot shows me a value. I have a title, the axis have been renamed. I have this petal with centimeters, this is what we define here. And smaller petal width have smaller dots. See, for example, this one of Iris Versicolor, this spot has a petal width of 1.1 and this one a petal width of 0.6. And let's see the biggest ones. They have 3.6 and this is why they are bigger circles too. And it's interactive because I can zoom in and out, move the chart around. Another thing you can do pretty easily with Alter is save your visualizations as PNG or view the source code. So if I do this, this is the JSON. Okay, let, let's do this for a second. I'm going to copy all this JSON. Well, in fact, I'm not going to do like that. I'm going to do in a better way, which is open in Vega Editor. And see, this is the JSON that was there. And... I have to run, and here is my chart. So what the Python library does is it creates this JSON and then it interpretates just like this interpreter does here. Let's now see another advanced visualization. In this case, I want to create a matrix, a 4x4 matrix of my iris data frame. So here I plot petal width against petal length. I could have plot the petal width against the sepal width or against the sepal length. So I have four continuous variables and I want to plot each one against the other. To do that and create a matrix, a 4x4 matrix, I can use the alt.repeat and use the column parameter. And for the y's, I do the alt.repeat and the row. So I repeat the columns and the rows. I use the type quantitative to make sure to indicate alter that the data type is quantitative, so continuous. I can use all these other parameters that I used before. So my, score, my color scheme, I keep it. I keep my tooltip. In this case, not only I keep it, I put all the variables that are going to be included in the chart because since I'm going to do the 4x4 I can have the four quantitative columns and the categorical column species. 
so I can see each dot what its individual values are for each one of these. With properties I can set the width and the height of the chart itself and with this repeat I can set the order in which the columns of the data frame are going to be displayed in the rows and the columns. So my rows are gonna have four, well I'm going to have four rows, one where the sepal length is going to be plot against every element in the columns and so on, one for the sepal width and the columns I'm gonna have the sepal length plot against each of these rows, right? And of course, sepal length is going to be plot against itself, sepal width against itself, and so on. And I can set the interactive property and a title also for the matrix itself. So not for each individual chart, but for the complete element of all the charts altogether. And here you have it. I can zoom in and out and I can visualize easily all the elements against each other and see which ones seem more interesting or more different, but okay, so this is for exploratory data analysis and it's a great feature. Now I want to do a last visualization with a different set of data. I want to create a map. To create a map, the first thing I need is to import some geographical data. I'm going to use GeoPandas. I don't know if you, if you know this library. I talked about it in a previous library of the week. There is plenty of documentation. It's really a great library if you want to work with geographical analysis. It's not the goal to explain this library, but just so you understand what I'm doing here. So I'm importing GeoPandas. I'm creating a GeoPandas data frame, a geo data frame from a zip file that contains geographical information. I pass this to a world variable. I create a simple world with less columns because this is a very, very, very big data set. And this data frame, so let's in fact create it so it's, it's easier. This data set has the name of the country, so for each country it has also a geometry, so the geometry is here, polygon, multi-polygon and so on. These are coordinates and these, the different libraries for geographical data visualization are able to interpret all this data. They are sets of latitude and longitude information. And in the data frame, I keep the population, the GDP, and then I do some transformations. I take Antarctica out of the data frame because it gives some problems. I create the GDP per capita by dividing the GDP of the country by the population. And I multiply by a million because the GDP is in million dollars. I put the population in million people and I rename some columns. And here I have this simple world geo data frame. And Alter is capable of plotting geo data frames and create charts with them. So I create this chart, I call it Popest Plot with Alt.chart, so this doesn't change. And I use the Mark Geo shape instead of the Mark Bar that I used before or, or Mark Circle. I still use the encode, so I told you encode is always the keyword or the function to give the information about our, our what we have to plot. The color is going to be the GDP per capita that I calculated earlier. I want to hover by all the information. So the idea is that this is going to create a map that shows the GDP per capita quickly by displaying each, each country in a color based on their revenue per people. But then when you hover on it, you can see if it is a country with a lot of population or a country with low population and a lot of GDP and so on. This project sets the projection. This is a mandatory argument. And in this case, I use Mercator because it is a very common one. Properties, width and height. So this is just for the frame, for the image that is going to be displayed. I call the interactive and I set a, and I set a title for the chart. And here we have it. Oh, I forgot to say so. The color in this case is a continuous scale. See, because I put here quantitative. See, if I had put, this is just for fun, if I had put here N, which stands for nominal, I think, but by, by the way, N is categorical. Since I declare that this is, it is not obviously categorical, but if I declare that this is categorical, it's going to categorize 
its GDP per capita and is going to display each country in a different color because there is not a single country that is going to have exactly the same GDP or maybe by luck but it's the same GDP per capita okay because even if there is a difference of one it's going to be a different category but in this case it is continuous so I put here my Q it uses I think this is the Viridis scale it is very common and see it is a gradient a continuous gradient that tells you the GDP per capita when you hover over it you have the different countries so Spain has a GDP per capita of 29,000 the USA 65,000 Canada 46,000 Mexico almost 10,000 and so on so that's it for today I hope you enjoyed this video like it if you liked it, subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bell, it would help me tremendously. And if there is a Python library you would want me to talk about, just leave a message in the comments below and I will get back to you soon. Until next time!